settle in this hotel. It looks comfortable. It looks really great. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, our talks this morning have been wide ranging. We've touched on the defense strategies in Southeast Asia, the Indian Ocean, peacekeeping efforts in the Middle East, need for richly endowed countries such as ours to be sensitive and helpful toward other nations not as blessed with natural resources, space, and security, nuclear nonproliferation, and some of the legal issues resulting from extraterritorial <laughs> uh, application of our own United States laws. But all of our discussions have left me with two enduring feelings. But Australia is a friend for the long pull, where people see things basically as we do, but who will always have the courage and the friendship to tell us when they think we're wrong. Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser and I lead countries whose best days lie in the future. Our friendship and cooperation will hasten the day when more of the people of the world can share what we're so fortunate to enjoy, freedom, strength, and confidence in the future. It's been a pleasure meeting with the Prime Minister and I certainly thank him for coming to visit our country. Right. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you very much. Mr. President and ladies and gentlemen, the discussions that we've had this morning are regarded as being particularly useful and constructive, quite clearly from uh, the policies that have been implemented in the United States uh, under the President's uh, charge, you would expect, I think, that Australia would be in a fair measure of agreement on a number of those policies. The economic policies and the strengthening of the dollar and the strengthening of the economy of this country, we'd like to say uh, all strength to your arm, Mr. President, because uh, economically strong the United States is important to the entire free world. And uh, the policies in relation to East-West, and again, the strong United States is important not only to the American people, but to Australian people and to free people everywhere. And so again, Mr. President, all strength to your arm. We've discussed, uh, as you've indicated, a wide range of issues. And I was particularly delighted, Mr. President, with your willingness to see what can be done to remove the the rough edges uh, at the extraterritorial reach of United States law. And uh, we have agreed that uh, as uh, and when it will be convenient for both our attorney generals for them to consult to see how uh, this might best be achieved. And uh, thank you very much uh, for, um, uh, for directing the, for that, that that review take place. We've uh, discussed uh, at length major north-south issues, economic uh, relationships between wealthy countries such as the United States and Australia and many others, and the developing countries or the least developed countries of this world. And uh, I hope I'm not putting words into, into your mouth, Mr. President, and saying that I believe that we both recognize uh, that it's important for the peace and stability of the world that we try uh, and make progress in these major issues, that we try and see that more and more peoples of the world have opportunities to live a decent life in dignity and self-esteem. And you have told me of some of the things uh, that you have in mind to help achieve that particular objective. Uh, we're meeting again uh, this evening, Mr. President, and. I'll be looking forward to discussions with your Secretary of State and Secretary of State for Defense and other members of, of your administration. Um, again, may I say how much my wife and I and the entire Australian party are delighted to be here. And may I say how delighted we are to see what is happening in the United States right at this time.
been no resolution of that particular issue at all, and it barely was touched upon. Okay, all right.